For today's video, we will be taking a look at the Battle for Mill Springs, also called the Battle of Somerset, the Battle of Fishing Creek, and the Battle of Logan's Crossroads. This battle took place on January 19, 1862 in Pulaski and Wayne Counties near Nancy, Kentucky. The commanders who took the field for the Confederacy was Major General George Bibb Crittenden and Brigadier General Felix Kirk Zolokofter and for the Union, Brigadier General George Thomas. This battle would be held in the popular press for a while as it was a major Union victory until General Ulysses S. Grant would have victories at Fort Henry and Donaldson. However, the battle for Mill Springs would hold a distinction of being the second largest battle held in the state of Kentucky during the Civil War. Come along with us as we travel back in time to see what happened during the Battle of Mill Springs. Special Notation Here at Kentucky Tennessee Living, we always strive to find out as much information as is available concerning the commanders and military units. We are hopeful that more information becomes available with time and that these men will be remembered in history. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine! Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Brigadier General Zollicofter Confederate Brigadier General Zollicofter guarded the Cumberland Gap until November of 1861. Zollicofter felt that the Cumberland Gap was sufficiently fortified, which later proved to be a false assumption. Please see our video on the Battle for Cumberland Gap Part 1 for the full story. Zollicofter moved his troops west to help fortify Bowling Green, Kentucky, and to strengthen the Confederate garrison there under the command of Brigadier General Simon Boulevard Buckner. Zollicofter found that at Cumberland River, at the southern bank at Mill Springs, was a bluff, and the northern bank was low and flat. So Zollicofter would take advantage of a strong natural defensive position and make his winter headquarters at Mill Springs. The Confederate forces involved would be Crittenden's 1st Brigade, commanded by Brigadier General Felix Zollicofter, 15th Mississippi Infantry, 20th Tennessee Infantry, Kentucky and Alabama Infantries, Cavalry, and Artillery Regiments. Total troop strength would be 5,900. However, Zollicofter made a huge blunder in his calculations. He felt that the northern bank, being low and flat, would be more defensible, and so he moved most of his men to that position, where they were closer to the Union troops stationed in Somerset. Seeing the blunder, both Major General George Crittenden and Confederate General Albert Sidney Johnston ordered Zollicofter to move his troops across the Cumberland River back to Mill Springs. Zollicofer refused this order, stating that he did not have enough boats to cross the river quickly and his troops could be caught by the Union halfway in the crossing. In early January, Crittenden was stationed in Knoxville, Tennessee, and seeing the danger that Zollicofer had placed himself in, immediately took off for Mill Springs. Crittenden devised an attack on the Union troops so that they could not join forces and attack the Confederate Army first. Union Brigadier General Thomas Stationed at Lebanon, Kentucky, Union Brigadier General George Thomas had received orders in late December of 1861 from his superior, General Don Carlos Buell, to break up the army of Major General George B. Crittenden, who was Zollicoffer's superior, and drive them across the Cumberland River away from Somerset. The march began on New Year's Day, but it was slow and fraught with difficulty as the land was rain-soaked during the entire march. On January 17, 1862, Thomas and his troops arrived at Logan's Crossroads and waited for Brigadier General Alban Scoff's troops who were stationed at Somerset to join them. The two generals were separated by a rain-swollen place named Fishing Creek. This prevented the two generals from combining their troops quickly. 
The federal forces involved in the upcoming battle would be the 4th Kentucky Infantry, 10th Indiana Infantry, 9th Ohio Infantry, 2nd Minnesota Infantry, and a Tennessee Infantry, Cavalry, and Artillery Regiments. Total troop strength would be 4,400 men. The 9th Ohio Infantry was made mainly of German-speaking soldiers from Cincinnati, Ohio. The commander of this unit was Major Gustav Kamerling. The particular regiment of men had the distinction of being involved in the 1848 revolution in Europe, and so they were already battle-hardened. Also, the 4th Kentucky Infantry was under the command of Colonel Speed Fry. Also, the 1st Division, Army of the Ohio, was under the command of Brigadier General Albion Francisco Schaff or Brigadier General George H. Thomas. It kindly goes to how you read this as the 1st Division of the Army of Ohio was giving reinforcements to the brigade under the command of Thomas. The battle begins. When Crittenden arrived, he found that Zollicoffer had not obeyed his orders. He saw that Zollicoffer had the swollen banks of the Cumberland River behind him and the Union forces at his front. Crittenden then put his plan in action of attacking the Union forces first to allow the men to cross the river. The Confederates did not know that Thomas had been reinforced by some of Scoff's troops. Also adding to their woes was the fact that many of the men were carrying Napoleonic-style flintlock muskets, which had been rendered almost useless in the wet and muddy conditions. Also, because of the weather, Crittenden's troops were hindered and the element of surprise was lost. The Confederate forces under the command of Crittenden attacked Thomas at dawn on January 19th. Zollicoffer led the frontal assault against the Union with initial success. The Confederate 15th Mississippi Infantry and the 20th Tennessee gained ground against the Union 4th Kentucky Infantry, who was under the command of Colonel Speed S. Fry, and the 2nd Minnesota and the 10th Indiana and some Union Cavalry. Death of Zollicoffer Taking place in a dark wooded area, covered in mist from the rainy conditions, add in a lot of gun smoke from the battle and confusion would soon take hold. Zollicoffer led his men wearing a white coat. This meant that he could be seen by both his men and the enemy. The irony of wearing the white coat is that Zollicoffer had shaven his beard before the battle because he was afraid that he would have been recognized by the enemy. By mistake, Zollicoffer approached the Union 4th Kentucky Infantry, thinking that they were his own men that were firing on their own men in friendly fire. Zollicoffer was shot and killed by Colonel Fry himself. For a moment, because of the sudden death of Zollicoffer, the Confederate lines fell back. Fry's regiment continued firing against the line and caused confusion momentarily. Crittenden rallied his men and ordered a general advance by Zollicoffer's brigade and the brigade of the Brigadier General William H. Carroll. This second Confederate attack had failed. Nevertheless, the Confederates attacked the Union several times without success. At one point, the Confederate 15th Mississippi Infantry almost broke through the Union line but was thwarted when Thomas arrived on the field and ordered the 9th Ohio to advance against the Confederates while the 2nd Minnesota maintained its position while pelting the Confederates with heavy fire. The 9th Ohio was able to defeat the Confederates' left flank and the battle was over. At that point, the Confederates gave up their line and ran back towards Mill Springs in a full rout. Crittenden was unable to stop his men from retreat at this point. It has been a rumor that he was drunk at the time of the battle. The Confederate troops frantically crossed to the south side of the Cumberland River for safety. The fleeing troops abandoned 12 valuable artillery pieces, 150 wagons, more than 1,000 horses and mules, and all of their dead and wounded. The retreat continued all the way to Chestnut Mound, Tennessee, near Carthage, about 50 miles due east of Nashville. There would be a total of 10,300 troops engaged. The Union had 4,400 troops and the Confederacy would have 5,900 troops.
Troops from Minnesota, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi all participated in the battle. Casualties and losses for the federal side would be 39 killed and 207 wounded. There are other sources that state that the estimates were 262 total casualties for the Union. For the Confederate side, it would be 125 killed and 404 wounded and or missing. With another source stating that there were 552 casualties for the Confederacy. Leaving the grand total of wounded and casualties between 775 to 814 on both sides of the battle. Aftermath Crittenden's military career was finished after this battle. Crittenden was accused of being drunk on the battlefield and treason. His troops were disbanded, his rank was busted down to Corps Commander, and served under Buckner at Bowling Green, Kentucky. Within two months of this new position, he was relieved of his command entirely and arrested for subsequent episodes of drunkenness. Sometime in October 1862, Crittenden would have to face a court of inquiry that was ordered by General Braxton Bragg. Crittenden resigned his post as general and served the remainder of the Civil War without rank on the staff of Brigadier General John S. Williams as well as other officers in Western Virginia. This would be counted as a Union victory. This victory defeated and ended an early Confederate defensive campaign in the South Central Kentucky. This victory would carry into Middle Tennessee campaign on February of that year. It was not until the summer months of 1862 that the Confederate forces would once again challenge the Union forces in eastern Kentucky. General Braxton Bragg and Major General Kirby Smith would launch their Kentucky campaign, which ended with the Battle of Perryville and with Bragg's retreat. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Civil War Battles. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification button. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries in Appalachian history.